Happy, happy Sunday, everyone. We hope that everyone is having a blessed day wherever you are watching today. And welcome to Feast at Home. It's the first Sunday of the month, and yep, you know what month it is. This means that Christmas is just right around the corner. You know, we all have a lot of things to say about this season, on how it's the season of love, of sharing, and of hope. But what I personally hold on to, brothers and sisters, is that this season is the season of giving. And more than just giving gifts, exchanging cards, I believe the reason why this season is truly in our hearts is because God gave us the greatest gift. More than just His Son, He gave us life, He gave us love, He gave us hope in the most unlikeliest of forms. And we just want to thank Him for that as we invite you to prayer and worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank You for the greatest gift that we received. Thank You for Your life, love, and hope. We pray right now that You help us be good stewards of these gifts so that we may give it all back to You tenfold and share to others the life you have bestowed, the love you freely gave, and the hope that you'd be with us again very soon. This we pray in Jesus' name. So with open arms I sing 
Now I let my walls come down. Let your presence fill me now. I receive your love. By your grace, I have been saved. I receive this life. By your cross, I've been set free. You are everything. You are enough for me. You're all I need. He wins a breaking off, a new dawn I found. A life unshackled from the chains of my past. No longer bound in prison, forgiven. Lord, we continue to lift our eyes to you where all life, love, and hope comes from. We continue to praise you and declare that whatever comes our way, 
pandemic and all, you'll always be fighting, working, and moving for us. You've always held us in your arms, and you will never let us down. in 
Hello everyone! Welcome to another session here at Feast at Home, here at Feast Bikutan's Facebook page. My name is Brother Velden Lim. I am the Feast Builder. I am the preacher here on, on this feast. And as usual, alam nyo, malapit na po magpasko. Handa ka na ba para sa Pasko? I hope that you have decorated already o kaya planning to decorate. Lagyan naman natin ng konting diwa ng Pasko para naman sa ganun ay sumaya-saya ang puso natin bago matapos ang taon na ito. Amen! Na, pero, wa, 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 ma, ano ba? Actually, two weeks from now pa naman ang Pasko. Pero ngayong araw na ito, we are still in our deep dive in the Gospel of Matthew. Ipagpapatuloy po natin ngayon ang ating, ang ating series ng The Clash. And talk, our talk for today is entitled, Foolish versus wise. And I'm excited to give this talk to you today because we have a powerful message from the Lord today. But before we do that, let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast first. Together, let's make the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, pray this with me. All together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor God's Word. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Amen. Before I read our word for today, let me give you our one big message first. My one big message for you today is this. While you are waiting, God is working. I repeat, while you're waiting, God is working. Pakitay po sa ating comment section. Pero speaking of waiting, and alam ko, marami tayong hinihintay sa buhay natin. Our question of the day is this. I want you to type it in the comment section. Pakilagay lang po yung sagot ninyo. What is it that you are waiting for? Ano ba yung hinihintay mo? It can be a prayer, or it can be about your finances, maybe one true love. I don't know. What are you waiting for? Huwag po kayo mahiya. I-type po rin sa comment section. Bakit ko po pinapatype? Bukod po sa, uh, bukod po sa feaster engagement, gusto ko po sanang malaman yung mga pinaghihintay niyo so that the whole community, we can pray for one another's prayers yung pinaghihintay natin. Amen? Ma bago niyo habang tina-type niyo po yung mga sagot po ninyo diyan. Ako po i-share ko po. Alam niyo kung ano yung pinakahihintay ko? Honestly, ever since the pandemic began, there is not a day that I was not praying to the Lord, that I was not waiting for our face-to-face -face feast to come back again. In fact, araw-araw yan nasa isip ko kapag actually nga pag kanalulungkot nga ako minsan pag nami-miss ko talaga kayo. Binabalikan ko yung mga lumang litrato natin, mga pictures natin that we're together worshiping the Lord, na napuno tayo sa PCU Auditorium, o kaya sa Lakeshore, o kaya kahit yung mga lumang pictures natin sa SM Bikutan Cinema, Cinema One. And it just, alam nyo, habang naghihintay, habang pinagdarasal ko, lagi ko sinasabi, Lord, one day, one day, one day, babalik po tayo dyan. And hopefully, malapit na ito. But how about it? What is it that you are waiting for so that we can pray for you? Let me know your your answers in the comment section. Ayan, tingnan po natin. Okay, sige. Kathy Nasayaw, sabi niya, mawala na ang COVID. Ay, naka-prayer ko din yan. Financial freedom and engagement for 2021. Ano to? Engagement na wedding engagement. Ako, sana praying for you, sister. Anastasia Gray, sabi niya, Business success and financial freedom. Praying for you as well. Ayan. Ano pa? Marivic Dalmacio is waiting for a career breakthrough. Amen. May career career breakthroughs happen to you. Jessel Lim. Ayan. We are waiting for our first baby. Ay, nako. Lagi ko rin sinasama yan sa dasal ko. Ayan. Jason Barrientos. Matapos ang COVID pandemic at maging safe na for travel with kids. Ay, nako. Gusto ko din yan. Lalo na sana makapag... Maka, makalabas din ng bansa 
safe na mag-travel with the kids. Yeah. Uh, Jemima Torres says, financial freedom. Ayan. Uh, Maya Nalupa, waiting for my healing from anxiety. Six years won't make me stop from praying and waiting. Yes, amen. Praying for your healing, Maya. Andre Adsuara, waiting for the live sessions of the feast around the world and to succeed in the life insurance sector and helping people step up in their life. Amen, amen. Praying for that, for what you're waiting for. Jimmy Matores, sabi niya mayroon pa siya pahabol yung ibibigay ni Lord for me na makakasama ko. Ayan, one true love. Abi Mariano, waiting for the day to play the drums for a live audience deep in worship. Woohoo, gusto ko rin yan. Di ba? Doreen Narsolis, who's waiting for her dream house. Ayan. El Satan is waiting and praying to meet the Feast family again very soon. Dami pare-pares tayo ng prayer, no? Ayan. Um, Armesola Pateros, to all go back to normal. Ayan. Mari Chris Palsis, ayan, tao ko to sa buy and sell, for Christmas bonus by Sir Erwin Abeleda. Buti na lang doon kayo sa isang boss natin, nangihingi. <laughs> May Antarazona, waiting for career breakthrough. Ayan, Luisa Trenyosa, financial freedom and promotion. Fritz Kahlo, visa approval. Amen. Sa lahat ng mga naghihintay dyan na ma-approve ka nilang visa, praying for you. Angelica Diao, waiting for the answered prayers that soon my fiancé will visit me soon. Amen. Amen. Merry Chris Rapal, career breakthrough and business success. Ayan. Amen. Pag-pray natin yan. Erika Hapitan, magka-love life na ang mga friends kong single. Amen. Isama na rin natin si Eric. Isama na rin kita doon sa pagpapray ko na friends na mag- magka-love life na. Ayan. Prayer ko din yan. Nako. Lalo na sa mga nagbasa ng libro ko, bakit single ka pa rin? Para naman malaman nila na effective yung libro ko. No? Um, Mini Ortiz Luis, Tita Mini, pray na may makaupa na sa for rent na bahay namin. Amen. Ayan, para magkaroon ng income uh, flow of income. Anala is deployment. Ayan, abroad. Amen. Praying for that. Bell Josa, matapos din sana ang anum, ang aming family house and one true love. Ayan, di ba? Sige. Salamat, salamat po sa mga sagot ninyo. Uh, let, uh, let it be known to you, brothers and sisters, that we are always praying for you. We have intercessors. Kaya kung meron man kayong gustong ipagdasal o kaya meron kayong answered prayers, please click the intercession link. Meron po dyan. If you want something to be prayed for you or meron kayong Thanksgiving prayer, pakisend lamang po. At marami po tayong prayer warriors dito sa ating feed. But thank you so much for your... But... Brothers and sisters, alam nyo, we are talking about waiting. At yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayong araw na ito. I want you to know, tamang-tama, that this season, yung season bago magpasko, is called Advent. At tayo mga Kristiyano, we are celebrating this. Well, what is Advent? Actually, the season of Advent is a season of waiting. Kaya tamang-tama. Ang tanong ito, what are we waiting for? Actually, in Latin, Advent means coming. Ayan. Actually, we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. And 2,000 years ago, Jesus, our dear Lord, came here on earth for us. But He promised to come back. In fact, yan ang hinihintay natin. Hinihintay natin pag Pasko. Pero meron ba tayong ibang hinihintay? Jesus, when He ascended to heaven, He promised to come back. And today, I'd like to share to you three ways because I believe Jesus comes in three ways and this is what we are all waiting and preparing for ano yung tatlong pamamaraan ang Diyos ay babalik sa atin first is this Jesus comes to us every time ayan always sabi niya sa Matthew 28 20, yun yung huling habili niya sabi niya I am with you always even to the end of the age emphasis on always Jesus comes to us every single moment in our life. Alam nyo, hindi sinabi ng Diyos na I will sometimes be with you o kaya I will occasionally be with you or I will be with you kapag mabait ka when you're a good boy or a good girl and behave according to my expectations. Hindi kano ng Diyos. Jesus simply said, I am with you always. 24-7. No breaks. Walang bakasyon. Walang exceptions. Ganun ka klingi ang Diyos. That's why I want you to tell this to yourself. I want you to type it in the comment section. I want you to declare it right now. Jesus is with me always. Amen? 
Jesus is with me always. Type it in. God is with you in your good times. God is with you in your bad times. God meets you in your daily circumstances. God meets you in your joys. In your sorrows, He is also there. In your mountain peaks and in your lowest valleys, God is there. He also meets you, especially in the faces of the poor. The abandoned, the sick, the dying, the imprisoned, lahat ng mga nangangailangan. And also, God, Jesus, meets you in your prayer. Kaya nga alam nyo, um, ito, hindi ko masyadong type kapag sinasabi natin yung let's come into the presence of God pag magdarasal tayo or let's enter the presence of God hindi ko masyadong type yung kasi parang feeling ko technically, theologically hindi siya masyadong accurate kasi pag sinasabi natin let's enter into the presence of God or let's come into the presence of God para bagang nasa labas ka ng presensya niya bago ka magdasal kaya ako ang suggestion ko ito yung mas madalas kong sinasabi pag nagdarasal I always say Let's remember we're in the holy presence of the Lord. Diba? Parang mas accurate. Let's remember we're in the holy presence of the Lord. Bakit? Because when we pray, we simply become aware of God's presence that has already with, been with us all along. Bakit? God is always present. Madalas, ito lang, nakakalimutan natin. Tandaan nyo, God is always with us. Pero, you might be asking, bakit minsan hindi ko siya ma-feel? You know why? Dalawang rason. Una, baka kasi ikaw ang lumalayo. Tama o tama? Or pangalawa, baka nakalimutan mo lang siya. Pero ang totoo, nasa tabi mo lang siya palagi. Amen? That's the first one. The first thing. The first way God, Jesus comes into our lives. He comes every time. Every moment. Number two is this. We are preparing and we are waiting for God to come at the end times. I am. We believe as Christians, as Catholics, we believe in the second coming of Jesus, that Christ is coming back. Hindi ko alam kailan, hindi ko alam paano, but we know He will come. That's His promise. And on that last day, the judgment day, good will win over evil. And all creation, it will be restored in every dimension. Social dimension, cultural dimension, even personal dimension of our lives. Cosmic, sa universe, lahat yan aayusin, i-restore ni Lord. Why? Because God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And it's starting right now. Nabanggit na natin to in the past. And every human being that has ever lived on this planet will stand before King Jesus to receive His mercy if they want to. Yun ang paniniwala natin on Judgment Day. However, Jesus does not only come to us in the end times when everything, when everything is all said and done. Jesus also comes at the end of our times. That's the third one. End of our times. Ito ha, huwag kayo masyado magugulat. Ito ang katotohanan. Mamamatay ka rin. Mamamatay rin ako. Lahat tayo mamamatay. And yung iba pag sinabi kong, mamamatay ka rin, parang kinikilabutan sila. Yung iba natatakot. Pero alam nyo, itong paniniwala ko. If you're a Jesus follower, that statement should not scare you. It doesn't have to scare you. Bakit? Kasi alam nyo, kung talagang sinusundan mo ang Diyos, kahit nandito ka sa mundong ito, o kaya kahit nasa langit ka, doesn't matter. Kasi parehong nandun si Lord. Kaya huwag tayong matakot. Kasi even in the end of our times, God will be with us. He, we will be with God. Pero itong maganda ha, itong gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo. Habang wala pa tayo sa end of our times, habang wala pa tayo sa end times, ito maganda. Sana we live our life, life to the fullest. Sana sulitin natin yung buhay natin. Lahat ang meron tayo, talento, kabutihan, um, resources, um, lahat ng meron tayo naway ibigay natin para sa kadakilaan ng Diyos, for God's glory. That's why today, I want you to lift your head up. Yes, I know sometimes we feel that, I, I know we have a lot of problems, nalulungkot tayo. Minsan ang tagal-tagal na natin, hintayin tong pandemic na ito matapos. But today, my dear friends, I don't know where you are right now. Maybe some of you, you are grieving. Maybe some of you, you are, you are, you are in a limbo. Parang di mo, nawawalan ka ng pag-asa. But let me tell you this. Lift your head up. Put a smile on your face. And let God's hope enter your heart this Advent season. 
Because I want you to believe that your best years are ahead of you, not behind you. The best is yet to come. And here at the feast, we always say this, we believe that better things are coming. Amen? Declare it, better things are coming. Why? Because while you are waiting, God is working. Yes, He is working. Whatever it is that you are waiting for, ang Diyos gumagawa siya ng paraan. Before we start this feast formally at the talk, I want us to come into prayer. And as we come into prayer, I want you just to think of the things that you are waiting for. Lift it all up to the Lord and pray this with me. Pray this. Put your hands over your heart. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for reminding us that our best days are ahead of us. While we are waiting, we believe that you are preparing, you are manufacturing, you are perfecting everything in our favor. We believe that better things are yet to come into our lives because you never left our side. This I claim in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to us today. Amen. Amen. While you are waiting, God is working. Before we jump deeper into our talk for today, before I read our passage, let me just first thank each and every one of you who are continuously, generously giving to the Lord through the feast. Maraming salamat po sa mga every week nagpabadala ng kanilang tithes, ng kanilang love offering. It not only glorifies God, it also helps us do ministry. It also helps us to continue what we are doing. Ito pong lahat ng ginagawa natin, ito po ay nagiging posible dahil po sa generosity po ng bawat isa. And nakakatuwa, there are so many people messaging me, telling me the wonders of giving, the wonders of tithing. They are sharing to me yung faithfulness sila sa tithing. Si Lord, binabalik din sa kanila. At ako, hindi, sinasabi ko sa kanila, hindi na ako nagugulat kasi ganun talaga ang Diyos. Pag nagbigay ka sa Kanya, hindi siya magpapatalo sa pagbibigay sa iyo. Sisiguraduhin niyang palaging mas marami siyang ibibigay kaysa sa bibigay sa atin. That's why I encourage you to give today, my dear brothers and sisters. Lalo na ngayong panahon ng Pasko. This is the season of giving. I hope that 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 spirit of giving, that spirit of joy keeps on um, igniting the fire in your heart to always help, to always give glory to the Lord. So again, maraming salamat po sa mga nagpapa, nagpapadala ng kanilang love offerings and tithes and it surely helps what we do for the Lord. And should you want to give today, and I, I, and I highly encourage you to do so, you can give through various ways. You can give through credit card. You can give through our East-West Bank account, through our BDO account, or you can give via GCash. You can transfer to those accounts. And for more details and for more info, you can click the link feastalabang.com slash give. Ayan po. Thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity. Amen. May God reward you for that. Let's go into the meat of the talk. Again, our one big message today is this. While you are waiting, God is working. And nabanggit ko kanina, our talk title for today is Foolish versus Wise. Bakit ganito? Because in Matthew's chapters, Matthew chapters 24 and 25, there are three parables about being ready for Jesus' return, for the second coming. But ngayon, we are going to skip the first two. We are just going to focus on the last one. And bakit foolish versus wise? Because today we are going to read about the parable of the ten virgin bridesmaids. Ayan, the parable of the thir- ten virgin bridesmaids. Let's start. It's in Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Let's read it. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. So meron daw sampu, yung five foolish, yung five wise. 
The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. So yung limang foolish, kulang yung kanilang oil, yung limang wise, merong extra. Let's continue. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, at the, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. So wala na daw sila. Sabi niya, bumili kayo dun. But, so umalis sila. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. This is a beautiful story, but this is often misunderstood. And marami sa atin ang hindi natin masyado maintindihan itong parable na ito. Bakit? Because one of the biggest reasons why we can't understand this parable is that kasi sobrang ibang-iba yung wedding traditions and celebration natin today versus sa wedding traditions and celebration ng ancient Jews. Sa atin, example la, sa atin, one day event ang kasal, di ba? From morning hanggang evening, di ba? And sa kanila, iba. One whole week, isang buong linggo. May kantahan, may sayawan, may kainan, may inuman, araw-araw, for one whole week. Kaya hindi nakapagtataka no, na, na sa unang miracle ni Jesus, sa wedding at Cana, naubusan ng alak. At doon gumawa ng milagro si Lord. Bakit? Eh kasi nga, one week ba naman kayo mag-party, mag-inuman, di ba? Maubusan talaga ng alak. And that's where Jesus turned water into wine. Ano pang kaibahan? Sa atin, ang venue natin sa kasal ngayon, simbahan, tapos ang reception sa hotel, o kaya sa garden, di ba? Sa kanila, ancient Jewish tradition is this. Ang wedding ceremony, ang venue niyan sa bahay nung babae. So doon kinakasal, andun yung rites, andun yung ceremonias. Pero ang reception, doon sa bahay ng groom. Ayan. So, meaning, ito na, mas nagkakaroon na ng linaw yung story. Meaning, after the wedding, merong malaking procession coming from the bride's house, going to the groom's house. Where they will have this week-long party reception. Doon talaga sila. And pansinin niyo in the story, there are 10 bridesmaids. And those 10 bridesmaids, they were female guests who were given the task to welcome the groom into the wedding banquet. So, kasama yan. Hinihintay nila. Sa pros- uh, nandun sila sa labas ng bahay. Hinihintay nila dumating yung groom. Bakit? Kasi doon na gagawin yung reception. And in the story, it is said there that these women, the bridesmaids, carried lamps with olive oil drenched cloths. Parang ganyan yung nasa picture. So, merong lamp, tapos merong cloth. Ayun, nandun yung wick nung, nung, nung apoy. Tapos, nakasaw-saw yan dun sa olive oil. And, sabi sa story, out of the ten women, five were wise enough to carry extra flasks of oil. And five were foolish to not bring extra. So, kulang. And, ito ang nangyari. Sabi sa story, na late yung groom. Now, now, yun ang nangyari, na late yung groom, tapos naubusan sila, so nagalit yung groom. Hindi na sila pinapasok, hindi na sila kakilala. Now, yun yung picture. Mas naiintindihan natin ngayon yung, yung picture. Naiimagine natin yung, yung parable of the ten virgins, virgin bridesmaids. Now that we can picture it, let me share to you three lessons that we can learn from it. Are you ready? First is this. You need to wait for God's perfect timing. Ayan. Ang tagal-tagal nila nandun. Hintay sila ng hintay. Parang ang tagal-tagal, pero ganun talaga. Pagka naghihintay ka, ay nako, dapat pasensyoso ka. 
Tama ba? Pag alam mo, yung taong hinihintay mo ay babalik, eh maghihintay ka talaga. Titiisin mo kahit anong mangyari, di ba? Eh yung iba nga sa inyo dyan eh, hindi niya nga kayo sure kung mahal talaga kayo, pero hinihintay niya pa rin. <laughs> May biro lang, hugot eh, no? Pero, flash news, ha? Flash news. No matter how organized you are, no matter how good a planner you are, here's the thing about life. God doesn't follow your schedule. Tama ba? Kahit na grabe ka magplano, grabe ka mag-schedule, grabe ka ka-organize, hindi pa rin palagi nasusunod yung schedule mo. Hindi sinusunod ng Diyos yan. He doesn't follow our timing. In fact, marami sa pagkakataon na bu sa buhay natin, God is somehow always late according to our expectations. Tama ba? Kaya nga tayo inip na inip, di ba? tagal naman ng promotion ko, ang tagal naman ng trabaho na hinihingi ko, hinihingi ko, ang tagal naman ng visa na hinihintay ko, ang tagal naman ng one through love, ang tagal ko naman yung mama, ang tagal ko naman makaalis sa utang, ang tagal ko naman uh, magkaroon ng anak. Ang, ang dami nating inihintay. And we want this now, pero ang tagal pa rin dumating. And it seems that God is late. And I believe that Our attitude while waiting is actually a reflection of how deep our faith in God is. Uulitin ko ah. Our attitude while waiting is a reflection of how deep our faith in God is. Ang tanong ko, anong attitude mo kapag naghihintay ka? Kasi... Waiting actually is one of the best expression of your trust in God. Ang tanong ko sa inyo ito, mainipin ka pa ba? Mainipin ka ba? Because impatience, I believe in this, impatience leads to all sorts of disasters. Kapag ka mainipin ka, minsan nadidisgrasya lalo. Parang ganito, kapag nagtanim ka ng, ng buto sa lupa, at gusto mo lumaki yung puno. Yung mga taong mainipin, anong ginagawa nila? Araw-araw, uy, huhukayin nila. Okay, okay ba yung buto? Uy, the next day, ay, parang di pa, babalik nila. The next day, uy, okay ba yung buto? After a few weeks, araw-araw, kinakalkal nila. Sa tingin nyo, tutubo? Nang malaki yung halaman? Probably not. Malamang, baka nga mamatay pa yung itinanim ninyo. Because, great things, take time. At ang problema ito, kapag naiinip tayo, here's what we do. We take matters into our own hands dahil naiinip tayo sa Diyos. Hindi nakita may entire Lord, ha? ako na bahala. Na hindi na ibig sabihin. For example, ito ha, gusto mong makalalis sa utang. Gusto mo ng financial freedom. Let me tell you this. Alam nyo, hindi ang pagtaya sa loto ang sagot sa problema mo. Or hindi ang panlol. Ang, ang problema yung iba dahil dahil at dahil hindi sila magkaroon ng pera, mang i-scam sila ng ibang tao. Ngayon, di ba? Ewan ko kung marami sa inyo dito nakakatanggap ng mga kung ano-anong mga... Uh, tanggap ka na sa trabaho, tapos click this link below, yung pala, i-scamin ka lang, di ba? Maraming mga tao, dahil hindi, hindi, wala silang tiwala sa Diyos, wala silang tiwala sa kakayahan nila. Ang ginagawa nila, shortcut. They take matters into our own hands. Let me tell you this, hindi yan ang sagot sa problema mo. Kailangan mong maging, maghintay at maging faithful sa kung ano man ang pinapagawa sa'yo ng Diyos. What can make you financially free is old-fashioned being faithful, being consistent in budgeting, and then finding new income streams, etc. Hanggang sa makaahong ka sa utang. Ito pa, example, waiting for your one true love. Itong problema sa atin, malinaw na nga. Sa atin, niloloko at inaabuso ka. Sinasabi na ni Lord, halos ipagsigawan na sa tenga mo. Huy, lahat na ng signs, red flags, sasarapan mo na. Iwan mo na yan. Bakit niloloko ka, inaabuso ka? I have someone better for you. Yan ang sinasabi ng Diyos. Pero ang problema ito, ang kulit mo pa rin. Kasi, you want to take matters into your own hands, hindi ka makapaghintay. Hindi, Lord, pwede na to. Ayos na ito. Paano hindi? Wala na magkagusto sa akin. Ayos na to. Kahit niloloko ako, hahawakan ko tong taong ito. Ayan na. Kaya, impatience leads to destruction. My dear friends, want you to know this. Faith is important. But if there's something more important than faith, it's actually faithfulness. Faithfulness 
especially while waiting. Alam ko naniniwala ka na darating yung pangarap mo, darating yung pinagdarasal mo. Pero ang tanong ko sa inyo ito, are you faithful enough? Do you have faithfulness? Will you keep on doing the right thing while you are waiting for your answered prayer? Kaya alam nyo, ito nakakatuwa. Ha? Sabi ni St. James, sabi ni St. James, yung demonyo daw, the devil believes in God. Parang tayo. We believe in God. But what the devil doesn't have, it is faithfulness. Ayan. And that's what you need in your life today. All of us, we need it. Kapatid, have you ever experienced seasons of long waiting? Yung tipong two years ka nang nagbabayad ng utang, parang di ka pa rin nababawasan ng utang. Siguro hinihintay mo magbagong buhay yung anak mo or yung asawa mo, but so far nothing has happened. Parang lumalala pa nga minsan. Or maybe you have been praying for healing, but the healing hasn't happened yet. Right now, you're waiting. You're waiting for your storm to end. You're waiting for your depression to be lifted. You're waiting for your problem to be solved. You're waiting for a need to be filled. But let me tell you this. Be faithful to God. Even when He doesn't seem faithful. Be faithful to God when He doesn't seem faithful. Amen? Papa, kung mapapansin ninyo sa storya ah, dito sa parable na binasa natin, all the ten bridesmaids, they fell asleep. Nakatulog. Both the wise and the foolish. Bakit? Kasi ang tagal dumating nung groom. Napagod talaga sila sa kahihintay. Now, why am I sharing this to you? What I'm trying to say is this. Sometimes the wait is so long. Ang tagal, tagal mong inihintay dumating ang Diyos. But let me tell you this. It's normal to get tired. It's normal to feel discouraged. It's normal to doubt God. But please hold on. Kapit lang. Huwag kang susuko. Stay faithful. Why? Because at the perfect time, I guarantee you, God will come. Darating ang Diyos. Darating yung hinihintay mo. God will come to heal you. God will come to fill your need. God will come to provide for you. God will come to save you and rescue you. God will come. Stay faithful. Number two, second lesson that we can learn from this story is this. While you are waiting, God is working. Sino sa inyo, alam nyo, sa mga naging estudyante dito, alam nyo, dalawang, dalawang klase lang ng estudyante kapag ka may quiz at may test. Yung unang kind ng estudyante is yung estudyante yung walang ibang ginawa kundi manghingi sa kaklase nila. Mga freeloader sa Tagalog. <laughs> sa Tagalog eh, well, sa Tagalog sila yung nambuburaot. <laughs> Mangga ganyan. Yung wala silang school supplies, yan yung unang klase. Walang school supplies. At yung isang klase ng estudyante, pag binuksan mo yung bag, parang national bookstore. Kompleto ng lahat ng supplies, lahat ng kulay, lahat ng pad paper, lahat ng pentel pen, stapler, lahat meron sila. Alam nyo, sa dalawang klase estudyante na yon nung estudyante ako, ako madalas yung kumpleto ako sa pad papers. Hindi naman ako talaga parang national bookstore. Pero sigurado ako, lagi ako merong pad paper. Meron akong one whole, meron akong one half, meron akong one fourth. Ang problema ito, syempre, kapag ka ikaw ang merong, merong papel, di ba? Kapag quiz na, ano yung mga kaklase mo? Tingin naman, oh. di ba? E, Meron mga ganyan, hindi ba yung mga kaklase mo, yung mga, yun na nga, yung mga walang school supplies, walang pad paper. Ganyan, ganyan. Sino bang meron? <laughs> di ba sa may hik? Pwede naman o. Di ba? So ikaw naman, bibigay ka. Ito ang problema. Tinuruan ako ng nanay at tatay ko na masama ang magdamot. Pero ito ang problema din. Sina- Tinuturuan ako masama ang magdamot, pero pinagagalitan din ako kapag laging ubus ang pad paper ko. <laughs> di ba? Kaya, alam nyo, itong ginawa ko, kapag, kaya, kapag nakakakita ako ng walang, itong problema ko kasi, kapag nakakakita ako ng taong walang papel, kaklase kong walang papel, naaawa talaga ako, hindi matiis ng konsensya kong hindi magbigay, lalo na ang kapal ng pad paper. So, anong ginagawa ko? Para hindi na lang ako maawa, tuwing nagkukwiz, pumipikit na lang ako. <laughs> Para hindi ko sila makita. Dabiru lang. Kasi, kahit, alam talaga, nakita 
Walang papel. Sige na nga, bigyan ko na nga. Hanggang sa mauubos yung papel ko. Now, why am I sharing this to you? Kasi nung napaking, na, nabasa ko itong story ng Parable of the Ten Virgins, my question is, bakit ba hindi na lang nila ishinare nung, nung wise virgins, but hindi na lang sila nag-share ng oil dun sa mga walang oil? E nangihingi na nga sa kanila eh. Bakit ang damot naman nila? Does it mean that God is telling us to be selfish? It does not make sense. However, as I mature in the Lord and as I read the, about this text closely, I realize that there's a, a deep explanation about this. Ano yun? Ito po yun. Example, we can share paper. Papel lang yan eh. We can share food. We can share money. Pwede tayo maghiraman ng, ng clothes. We can share that. Mga bagay-bagay. However, there are some things in life that we cannot share with one another. For example, ito, toothbrush. Sini-share mo ba yan sa ibang tao? Pwede, pwede ka ba lumapit sa kaibigan mo? Uy, pare, pairam naman ang toothbrush. So, sige na, isang beses lang. Babalik ko rin sa'yo. Promise. <laughs> Hindi mo papahiram yan. Di ba, kadiri yun, di ba? In fact, kahit nga yung asawa ko eh, meron isang beses aksidente, nagamit ko yung toothbrush niya. Diring-diri siya. Sabi ko sa kanya, ang arte mo naman. Hinahalikan mo naman ako ba? Toothbrush lang sabi, eh, kadiri pa rin yan. Toothbrush, hindi pinapahiram yan. It makes sense, di ba? Why is this so? Because there are some things that are just too personal that you cannot share it with others. And it's the same thing with the oil in the parable. And in, in, our, in our Christian world, oil has always been the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Kaya nga may oil sa baptism, may oil sa kumpil. Kaya ibig sabihin, the oil, listen to this, the oil in this parable represents the personal work of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Yun yun. It's the work of the Spirit. Kung paano kanya binabago. And you cannot share that to anyone. In fact, ito ah, ang isang bata hindi niya pwedeng sabihin, ay, mapupunta ako sa langit. Bakit? Kasi yung nanay ko sobrang bait, sobrang religious, lagi ka pinagdarasal. Sorry to burst your bubble, but that does not work. Yes, your mother can share her example, she, she can share your, her stories, her wisdom, but only you can say yes to the Holy Spirit. Only you can say yes to God and let Him transform your life. In fact, bilang magulang, bilang preacher, as a follower of Christ as well, and as a husband, as a follower of Christ, and as a husband, and, and as a husband to my wife, and a father to my kids, alam nyo, my priority goal in life is to influence. Pakinggan nyo to ha. My priority goal is to influence and encourage as best as I could my wife and kids to be closer to God. Pero alam ko ito, klaro sa akin to, na kahit na gaano ko kamahal ang misis ko, yung mga anak ko, hindi ko pwede ipasa yun yung at share yung work ng Holy Spirit sa buhay ko sa kanila. Bakit? Because they should personally have to let the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. Kailangan yung asawa ko, oo, oo din siya kay Lord. Kailangan yung asawa ko, mag, magsisilbi din siya sa Diyos. Kailangan yung mga anak ko, ganun din. It's their own decision and own volition. And I cannot do anything about that, no matter how much I love them. Because they too will be accountable to God in the end. That's why, here's the beautiful thing. Salvation is an ongoing process for all of us. Yes, we have said yes to Jesus through our baptism. Yes, we have accepted Him as our personal Lord and Savior. But while we are waiting for Jesus to come again, remember this, we are still works in progress. Day by day, moment by moment, the Holy Spirit is doing His work in our heart and in our soul. That's why while we are waiting for Him to come again, God is working in our hearts, performing a spiritual surgery. He's healing all our brokenness. Kinokorek niya yung dapat i-correct sa, mga, sa puso natin. Pineperfect pa niya tayo. He's still working on us while we are waiting. Amen? Third lesson that we can get from the parable of the ten bridesmaids is this. Ask God... For extra oil. 
ask God for extra oil. Let me read that last line of the parable, which is a repeat of what Jesus said in the last chapter. Matthew 25, 13 says, For you do not know the day or hour of my return. Out of these three ways, yung manabanggit ko kanina, Jesus comes every time, Jesus comes in the end times, and Jesus comes at the end of our time. Ang alam lang natin dyan sa tatlong yan is the first one. Alam natin, uh, the Lord is always with us every time. We don't know when the end times or the end of our time will happen. So, here's the truth. Life is all about waiting. And come to think of it, we don't know how long we are going to wait. So, here's the third lesson. Ask God to supply you with extra oil for your long journey. Bakit? Mahaba-habang hintayan pa. We are in this for the long haul. That's why you need to ask God for extra patience, ask God for extra perseverance, ask God for extra faithfulness, ask God for extra obedience, ask God for extra fortitude. Kasi hindi natin alam kung gaano tayo katagal maghihintay. Amen? Naghihintay ka ba? Maybe you are waiting for God to move into your life. Maybe you're waiting for God to move and answer your prayer. Let me share to you this one last story before I end this talk. Alam nyo, um, as a father, I, 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 meron po ako dalawang anak. Yung isa mag four years old, yung isa one year old, one year old maigit. At yung panganay ko si Zion, Andito na kami sa edad na, 'di ba? Pag bata gusto mo laging laging pag nandiyan, gusto mo makuha kagad. Pag meron siyang naisip, gusto niya makuha niya kagad. Actually, yung iba sa atin hindi na nga tumanda eh. 'Di ba? Hindi tayo marunong maghintay. At napakahirap ituro sa bata paano maghintay. Kasi kapag ka hindi nila makuha yung gusto nila, nagtatantrums, umiiyak, nagwawala, nagtatampo, etc. And itong anak ko si Zion nakakatuwa uh, last week sabi ko sa kanya anak samahan mo ko bibili tayo ng parol so nagpunta kami dyan sa malapit sa may bamboo organ bumili ako ng, ng parol na kapis tapos pinagawa ko rin yung parol namin na luma nagawa sa papel na hapon so sabi ko sa kanya bibili tayong parol papagawa rin tayong parol para para makapag-decorate na tayo tapos ikakabit natin yan so nung nakuha na namin yung parol alam nyo ito anak ko ayaw kong tantanan daddy daddy ikabit na natin yung parol. Sabi ko sa kanya, bukas na anak. O kaya sa isang araw na, kasi yung hindi pa tapos yung pinapagawa kong parol. So kahit na nandun na yung nabili namin, meron pa akong pinapagawa. Sabi ko, sabay-sabay na. So, after a few moments, mamaya ma maaalala naman, Daddy, Daddy, ikabit na natin yung parol. Ang tagal mo naman ikabit yung parol eh. Sabi ko sa kanya, sige, bukas na. Daddy still working. Ayan, bukas na lang, busy si daddy. So, maya maya makaalala na naman niya, tapos na akong mag-work. Daddy, daddy, tapos ka na ang work. Eh, pagod na naman ako. Sabi ko, ano na, bukas na. Okay, kasi pagod pa si daddy. Eh, daddy naman eh, ganyan eh. O kaya, uh, tapos sabi ko sa kanya, sige, bukas. Nung magbubukas na, eto na. Dumating na yung tanghali. Eh, ang init na pag ikakabit yung parol. Sabi ko sa kanya, anak, ano na, mamaya hapon na lang. Sabi, eh, daddy naman eh, puro ko na lang mamaya, mamaya eh. Inis na inis na siya. Sabi ko, eh, kasi ang init eh. And you see, awa ng Diyos, naikabit na naman namin yung parol. At tuwang-tuha siya nung naikabit yung parol. Pero alam nyo, itong anak ko, tuwing naaalala niya yung hinihintay niya at tuwing naaalala niya na yung hinihintay niya eh hindi ko pa rin napagbibigyan anong ginagawa niya? Nagagalit siya nagtatampo in fact kung ano-ano nga ang pinagsasasabi sinabi ng, nito ni Zion sabi niya, ah, sige na nga ayaw mo naman ikabit yung parol eh so ako naman, ang sasagot ko o oh, sige, di ko na ikakabit sabi niya, ayaw ko na ikabit yung parol sabi ko, sige, eh di, di ko na ikakabit o kaya minsan sinasabi niya ayaw ko na nga sa'yo daddy di na kita lab. Ako naman, ito ang sagot ko sa kanya. Okay lang kung di mo ako lab, pero lab pa rin kita. At alam nyo, whenever I say those words, kasi nagtatampo nga, nagagalit eh. Zion is always stunned 
parang hindi niya alam yung isasagot. Parang labo no, no? Hindi ko na love yung daddy ko, pero love pa rin niya ako. And he was dumbfounded. Hindi niya alam paano magre-respond doon. He doesn't know how to respond. Pero alam niyo, pag narinig niya yun, okay lang, love pa rin kita. Alam niyo, Zion just smiles. And then after a while, kapag humupa na yung tampo niya, babalik din siya sa akin, yayakapin ako, tapos sasabihin niya ulit sa akin, Daddy, kailan natin ikakabit yung parol? <laughs> Pero sabi ko lang sa kanya, mamaya na, at kakalma na siya. Now, why am I sharing this story, simple story to you? It might be simple for you, but God is speaking to me through this experience. Hindi ba't ganun din tayo? Na kapag naiinip tayo kay Lord, nagtatampo tayo, di ba? Ito pa malala, nanunumbat pa tayo minsan, di ba? Kau talaga Lord ha, grabe ako, serve ako ng serve sa'yo ha, tapos ito yung gaganti mo sa'kin. Sa Lord, dan, bibigay ko sa'yo ng tights ha, tapos di mo ako binibless ha. Nanunumbat pa tayo. Minsan tinitreten pa natin si Lord minsan. Ay, sa mga servants, alam nyo yan, di ba? Uy, Lord ha, sige ka Huwag di mo pinagbigyan, di talaga magsuserve sa'yo. Di na ako atin ng online Bible LG. Nakakatampo ka na eh. Tinitreten pa natin si Lord. Kapag ka hindi pa natutupad yung hinihintay natin. But you know what? Here's the truth. Alam nyo? Kahit na anong tampo natin kay Lord, kahit na anong sumbat, kahit na anong threaten pa natin sa Kanya, at kahit na anong blackmail na hindi na natin siya, kahit ba-blackmail natin siya, na, oh, hindi na kita love, Lord. Alam nyo, here's the truth. I know, and I believe, ang laging sagot lang sa atin ni Lord, di mo ko love, di ka magsaserve, tatampo ka, okay lang. Eh di wag, basta ako love pa rin kita. Mahal pa rin kita. You see, my dear friends, habang tayo ay naghihintay sa katuparan ng mga dasal natin at habang tayo ay nagtatampo kapag parang ang tagal-tagal na alam niyo ito ang totoo actually si Lord naghihintay naghihintay lang din siya sa atin naghihintay siyang humupa yung tampo natin he is also waiting for us hinihintay niya mawala yung tampo humupa yung galit babawasan yung inis mabawasan yung inip. Hinihintay niya lang tayo na matauhan tayo ulit. Parang yung anak ko. At pag natauhan na tayo, lalapit na tayo sa kanya ulit. Pupunta sa yakap niya. At maglalabing ulit. Lord, yung pinagdarasal ko ha. And you see, my dear friends, that's the kind of God that we are waiting with. Ang Diyos Yes, you are waiting for the Lord to come. But the truth is this, God is also waiting for you. And while you're waiting, yes, God is working. He's working in your life. He's preparing blessings. He is working the inner, your, your, inner, your inner character. Well, let it be known to you that while, is, while God is working, God is also waiting for you. Hintay ka ng Diyos. Bumalik ka na sa Kanya. Stay with Him. Stay in His presence. Because I, this, the one thing I know, kahit hindi mo makuha yung lahat ng pinagdarasal mo, yung presensya ng Diyos, knowing that He loves you, no matter what, yun lang, sapat na. Let's come into worship. Let's pray before we worship our King and our God who always waits for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I lift up to you every person who is watching this video right now. You know, Lord, our aches and pains. You know, Lord, our deepest desires, our dreams that we are waiting for, O God. Lord, some of us, we are already tired of waiting. We are so exhausted. But Lord, today, give us extra oil. Give us extra patience. And Lord, as you are working, 
for the blessings that you have prepared for us. We pray, Lord, that more, more than that, may you work through in our hearts. Because we know while we are waiting, you are working in us as well. And Lord, remind us that more than what we are waiting for, it is you that we really desire, your presence. For we know your presence is more than enough. In your mercy, we receive everything that you have in store for us. Alam namin marami naghihintay na biyaya para sa amin. But for now, we are going to relish and, and bask in your loving and merciful presence. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue worshiping our God. Give glory to His name. Yes, Lord, you are all that we need more than the things that we are waiting for. We are waiting for you to always come into our lives whenever we need you because we need you all the time, oh God. Amen. May we receive your love. May we receive your mercy every single moment of our lives. Amen. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for being with us, for joining us today at Feast at Home. Maraming maraming salamat po for continuously supporting, sharing the stream. Salamat din po for your generosity. Before we end, I'd just like to invite you for our last online Bible Light group this coming December 9, Thursday, 8 
8pm. Yan po ang huling online Bible study natin, Bible Light Group natin uh, happening this Thursday. I hope to see you there as well. And um, yun po. Another thing is this. If you're a first-timer, first time mong mag-attend, first time mong ma-encounter itong feast at home, first time mong makapakinig dito sa feast, I'd like to meet you personally. O kaya kung hindi ka pa namin na meet personally, pangalawa, pangatlong beses mo na to, pero hindi ka pa namin nakikilala, I'd like to meet you after this live stream. Please click the 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 first-timers link in in a minute. And I'll be with you there to formally welcome you to our wonderful family here at Feast Bikutan. Again, maraming maraming salamat po for joining us today. Remember, while you are waiting, God is working. Amen? This is Brother Velden Lim for Feast at Home. I'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Have a great weekend.